this PowerPoint is a little longer, and so I'm going to move a little bit more quickly. We talked about left side, right side dynamic. Uh, the right is the stronger, the weak is the left. Uh, Clockwork Orange, this is kind of like futuristic punks. Um, if you notice the frame, weak, weak, strong, strong. So the strong guy, and then the weak guy, the strong guy, and then the weak guy. Uh, here is actually a rape scene. Notice um, they're using uh, a wide angle lens and it's distorting his face. It's creating that, that fish uh, eye effect. Uh, now why would they want to do that? Because they want to show how disturbing this scene is. Uh, so that's why they use that particular lens. We, we watched Joe versus the volcano. This is where he would, was coming out of the doctor's office thinking he was going to die. And the camera just lifted way up over his head and made him seem very vulnerable. Uh, this is Goodfellas the window shot. So I, I do want to take a look at this just because um, a lot's going on. So these two characters uh, are going to meet and Ray Liotta's character, he realizes uh, by something Robert De Niro tells him that he's going to be offed by the mob. And uh, as he's speaking, this background is going to go out of focus. So watch how they do this. Let me just grab my, I think this might be loud. So I met Jimmy in a crowded place we both knew. I got there 15 minutes early and I saw that Jimmy was already there. He took the booth near the window so we could see everyone who drove up to the restaurant. He wanted to make sure I wasn't tailed. He was jumpy. He hadn't touched a thing. So you notice the background is starting to go out of uh, out of focus. What they did is they dollied back, so they had the camera on track, and they dollied it back. And just as they were dialing it back, they were zooming in the lens just so perfectly that you don't really notice uh, what's happening. Now, why do it this way? I think it's trying to show Ray Liotta's internal state where everything's getting really intense. On the surface, of course, everything was supposed to be fine. We were supposed to be discussing my case, but I had the feeling Jimmy was trying to sense whether I was going to rat him out to save my neck. I've been telling you your whole life, don't talk on a fucking phone, right? Now you understand? The key light is the main light. Um, the key light for this video will probably be this light right here. Uh, so it's generally three-point lighting key light. It's the main source for to light a subject. It's hard, strong, traditionally at a 45 degree angle. Now, one of the things I should state is when I was in school and they started talking about where to place the lights, and it was almost like math. And I was afraid I wouldn't know how to do it, but. In reality, you can place the lights wherever you want to place the lights as long as it achieves the effect that you want. Sorry, the higher the key light is, then the more it exaggerates sharp features. The closer it is to eye level, then the more it flattens the features of a subject. So uh, if you were to ph photograph an actor with a round face, then it might be a good idea to place our key light higher, thus helping the sculpt to face more. If we were to photograph an actor with sharp facial features such in the below picture we might bring our key light closer to our level to help tone down those sharp features keeping the key at eye level does create problems though as shadows will run across the actor's face and he or she is liable to squint the fill light so in my lighting setup the fill will be more coming from over here the fill light fills in the shadows created by the key. It is softer, more diffuse light than the key and is placed closer to the camera on the opposite side of the key. In general, the fill light is kept at a lower height than the key. 
The difference in intensity between the key light and the fill light is defined by lighting ratio. Uh, this is where you know cinematographers really know what they're doing, and um, it's almost like mathematic. Uh, so you do this by determining by measuring the fill light alone, and then measuring the fill light plus the key light. The ratio you use shapes the look of your film. The most standard is two to one. The closer the two numbers are to each other, then the flatter and brighter your overall image will be. This is often referred to as high key lighting and is used in comedies and news type situations. So this is eight days a week. We'll just take a quick look at this one. I amused myself by watching the neighborhood. Life is my TV. And it was a little more interesting than network. See the ratio on his face? There is was two Mr. To one. Mays. My parents think he works for the CIA or the FBI. It's because every time he comes home, he drives his car around the block again and again. And it's a comedy. Oh, I wanted to show another clip from him. Um, and to make sure he's not being who's so sad. At about ten, I saw Matt go out to the. Up. At about ten, I saw Matt go out to the. Up. There was no. So uh, this is a night shot. So how does it differ? So uh, the most important aspect is actually back here, this light back here, because it allows us to see into the frame. Uh, the human eye can see very, very well at night, uh, and so uh, you. Most student films, you think, well, if it's night, it should be black, but actually we can see deep into into the night and so this is the most important area of that but you you want um, high contrast and you want black in the frame and then but then also for nighttime sh uh, photography you want to be able to see into the image in low key situations you will have higher ratios like 8 to 1 the higher the ratio, the more stark and dramatic your image will be. Shadows will loom in the background. Color will be, color will be polarized between light and dark. This low-key lighting is often used in horror films. So think as a kid, when you wanted to do a scary thing, you'd put a flashlight and you'd aim it low, coming up at your face. That'd be a low-key type of thing. This is the man who wasn't there. Think it must be on this one. Nothing much happening, anybody. So it's, this is kind of this is what's known as a film noir. Um, but you get the idea of the high the uh, in terms of this low key lighting. Often used kind of in these detective type films. Backlight, this is light located behind the actor and above, highlighting his or her sh hair and shoulders. In general, the backlight gives your subject greater definition and great gives your scene greater dimensionality. Eye lights, an eye light is a light either shined or bounced into the eyes of your actor, probably more likely bounced. Eye lights uh, bring the viewer's attention to the actors. In general, you want to give your protagonist eye lights and avoid giving highlights to your villain because they're the bad guys so good guys get highlights bad guys don't get highlights because you want to dehumanize your the evil characters background lights these also add depth and definition to your scene as well as el eliminating any unwanted shadows from the key and the fill so you don't want to have big shadows running across your walls A kicker, some people would use the term backlight and kicker interchangeably, but many differ differentiate between the two. Strictly speaking, the kicker is a light placed from a three-fourths back position on the opposite side of the key light. 
Uh, this is Excalibur. This is a uh, basically the myth of King Arthur. This still ha uh, is the best King Arthur movie made, 1981. Still holds up. You'd like it if you, you ever watched the whole thing. But this is the final battle sequence, and they actually shot it in a studio. And what they did is they put a big silk over the top of the studio, over the ceiling, and then the key light was coming in through that silk, and so it gives it this really soft look. Uh, so again, yeah, this is actually shot in a studio. So this is the final sequence in Excalibur. So Arthur is fighting his son. And this is a very stylized battle sequence. Come, father. Let us embrace at last. <laughs> So why such a short sequence for you know this uh, um, good and evil act in eternal conflict? Uh, I think it's because the film director just assumes that you know the story of King Arthur, and so you don't need a protracted scene battle sequence. You already know the outcome of the story, and so it's just you know more symbolic than any, anything else. Uh, Fresnel versus an open face. So a Fresnel, a key aspect, it has a lens and you can focus it. Versus an open face, you cannot. Uh, color temperature. So tungsten film is about 32K and daylight is about 56K. This is important, again, when you look on the settings on your phone and you, you want to take a photo or a video, and it had, it'll have like a cloud, a little symbol of a cloud or a symbol of a sun. It's basically telling you what color you want to color balance that. Um, so a clear blue sky is about 10 to 30K. In Calvin, hazy sky, eight overcast, 6,800. Average daily, it's 56. Fluorescent, 43 to 4. 4,800, early morning, 43, and then a typical tungsten bulb is about 32. So color, um, household lamps, 29, suns, sunrise and sunset, magic hour. So magic hour is just after sun, uh, sunset or just before sunrise. It's when um, the sunlight is very, very soft and it produces a very appealing look. So if you can take your photos or videos at that time, um, you'll get a, a more pleasant look. A standard three-point setup then, you have your key, uh, you have your fill, and then you have your backlight. The most important thing is you control the light, do not the lighting setup control you. You want to, essentially, you want to paint with light. That's what some cinematographers do. And again, you can put the lights wherever you want as long as they do what you want them to do. So day is a heaven. This is magic hour lighting just after sunset or before sunrise. So again, this entire film, when they shot it, they shot it during the magic hour. Uh, so just day after day, just having a small window with which, with which to shoot. Uh, and why did the director, Terrence Malick, do it that way? It's because he, back during this time period, they didn't have light. So he wanted to film it as though it were a real thing. Um, so I'll just give you a little taste of Days of Heaven. <coughs> this girl sneaking out of her orphanage right bef just before the sun comes up. Into the arms. 
You can see it produces a really soft light. Terrence Malick, the director, he, this focuses on basically a love triangle, but a big theme in his films is a, a young girl um, falls in love and then gets hurt and then this sort of um, uh, has her eyes opened up to how the world really is. And that's a big theme in all of his movies. Uh, so a high angle shot, the camera is looking down. Um, this is a scene from Psycho, just before he gets to the top of the um, staircase, he gets thrown down the staircase. This is a shot from a Levin, Lenny Riefenstahl documentary called Triumph of the Will. So she shot Hitler in it with a low angle and this sort of makes him look uh, like a heroic person because he's shot from a low angle. A pan, the camera is on a tripod, but it's moving from side to side. Pans work best with a wider lens. You want to be zoomed out. A tilt, the camera goes up and down. Tilts work best with a wider lens. You want to be zoomed all the way out if you have a zoom lens. And here's dolly tracking. So in Goodfellas, this is what they had the camera on. So they had some someone pulling the dolly and then the camera operator was zooming in as they were shooting. Boogie Nights, a crane shot. So in this particular film, this is the very beginning so it doesn't really need any setup, uh, but the you're going to notice that the camera um, sort of seems to be flying and at some a certain point the crane comes down and the camera operator uh, walks off of the crane shot and into the nightclub. We'll just watch a little bit of Boogie Nights. So I met Jimmy in a crowded place we both... Jack! Jackie, Jack! Jack, Jack. Jack, Jack. Camera's on a crane right now. So right about here, the camera operator is going to get off the crane. Now if you notice, this is all one shot. They're, we haven't cut yet. Still not caught, it's all one shot. Listen, Jack, I'm ready, I'm available. You put me in a movie, I can't be talking about it. Box office, Jack, 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 Still all one shot. So this goes on for a while, but so why do it all as one shot? Well, this kind of gets back to the difference between TV and film, and basically because you can, uh, it makes it cinematic. It makes it something that only film can do. They probably had to rehearse this probably weeks before they got it. Every actor has to hit their mark just in just such a way, or they have to start over. A 
the 180 degree rule basically says the camera has to stay on one side of a imaginary 100 degree line. If you cross that line, everything on the screen flips. Now watch, here's a f clip from a film called The Getaway. Watch how everything flips. See, now you can see where the camera is. Now it's going to flip to the other side and everything's going to seem reversed. Everything flips like that. Uh, lost in translation. Here's uh, um, the characters are. are, are um, this is Sofia Coppola, Francis Ford Coppola's daughter, and her theme in a lot of her movies it's kind of like a poor little rich girl. So she grew up as the daughter of a famous director, and now you know, the theme in almost all of her movies is people who are like her, who grew up rich, but are still sad for some reason. So these two characters, um, Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson, um, they're saying goodbye to each other for the, for the last time. And here she intentionally breaks the 180 degree rule, um, I think because it's trying to show the emotion between the two characters. So I met Jim. So Bill Murray, he sees her, this woman who he knows, who he's never going to see again after this, because he's just an actor in Japan who came to Japan to do a commercial, and he met this young woman. They had a relationship, um, but now it's time to say goodbye. And when they kiss in this scene, she's going to break the 180 degree rule, but it's intentionally, she knows what she's doing. She wants to show that they're caught up in this sort of deep moment between the two of them. So she broke the 180 several times there, but it's, do, it's for a reason. So if you know what you're doing, you can break the rule. And so that's the end of cinematography. Any questions, feel free to uh, email or text. And that's, I will see you next week.